Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish this point out. And uh, upon reviewing the the last three videos, uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to um, clarify on my explanation. Uh, one thing that was bugging me was uh, talking about boppers. Um, I I think I mentioned that you know you should just get rid of the the bopper thing, uh, but you might ask, what's the difference between using something like this to trim the edges and a bopper, or you know, the billet? What is the difference between this and a bopper? Well, there's really no no difference you know, physically. It's the technique behind it and the tradition behind the different tools. Uh, boppers are used in a way that's more like a hammer. Uh, it's used to peck at the uh, at the edges. Uh, that's the part I didn't like. So maybe a better explanation would be uh, don't peck at the edges uh, either with a billet or a bopper or hammerstone uh, unless you have to trim something uh, for a particular purpose. But just pecking at the edges, you know, just going around pecking at the edges with a bopper is part of its tradition on how to use the uh, the tool uh, that's what we should get rid of but um, I mean you don't have to I mean, that's just my recommendation it's a uh, something that I did a while ago anyway I'm gonna finish uh, finish this out because it's not finished it's just a biface I found something in this book uh, by Noel Justice this book is out of print so you won't be able to find it. Uh, you may be able to get an electronic copy. Uh, don't spend any money buying a physical book. Uh, you can find a lot of these points and a lot of these descriptions uh, on projectilepoints.net and other places on the internet. Okay, so I'm gonna, I was going to do this point here. All right, so it meets the size requirement. And I got plenty of room for it. And I kind of like the way it's got serrations down here at the, at the lower half of the blade. Although I don't see them on that side, what I'm going to do is I'll make this more symmetrical than this one here. And I'll kind of make it a little more fancy. But I, I need to straighten out the edges and put in the notches uh, for the barbs. And finish it up. So I should be able to do that in 30 minutes. And while I'm doing... All this pressure flaking which is what I'm going to be doing I could talk about stuff <clears throat> right right okay I tried changing the light up the lighting a little bit uh, the lighting is always difficult for me when I'm working obsidian or dacite now dacite is really steppy so uh, the secret to working dacite, I think, is not being uh, too picky with it. Just be very careful. Uh, and what I mean by that is if you see a little flaw somewhere or a little step, uh, don't try to correct it because it, it sometimes it just compounds the issue makes it worse so you leave in a, a certain amount of uh, certain amount of crud so to speak in the finished item and after you get experienced over time you'll have more a more smooth surface but in the beginning if you don't have a smooth surface with dacite or other steppy materials uh, don't worry too much about it just don't show anybody <laughs> don't display the point you know what I mean uh, but yeah just um, just don't worry too much about it I kind of recommend a death site to new guys just because of the ease in removing flakes, you don't have to use a lot of force to remove the flakes. And it pressure flakes well once you get the hang of it. But you've got to 
not be too ambitious uh, and not try to do flakes that are really long unless you have experience. Some guys really like dacite and not all dacite is created equal. Uh, some of it, like black butter dacite, naps extremely well. And it's very sought after. This is just the regular stuff, I think. Yeah, this is kind of a grayish, kind of a charcoal gray dacite, which is pretty typical. And the way I get around all the step fracturing is... Uh, like I showed in the previous videos, make sure all the contours are convex. You don't have any major obstacles to the flake path. And when you do the pressure flaking, don't be too ambitious. Although you can run extremely long flakes on this stuff with pressure. It's really not that easy, even with experience. Now you can be very picky and uh, very methodical, but I think you'll notice a, a lot of the flake over grind guys, they don't work in dacite very much. And I think that's because it does crush on the edges and it is sometimes unpredictable. The quality of dacite ranges from really good to really bad. So it may not be you. It may be the quality of the dacite. Or dacite. Oh, the name of that point. Let's see. 2449. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's a... Uh, Who contracting stem or how contracting stem? Borax Lake Obsidian uh, site, uh, California, LAK 510, Lake County, California. So I don't know if they have DAS site in Lake County, California. I'm just going to assume that they they imported the DAS site if they didn't have it. <laughs> Hopefully it's okay. And this one will be available for sale in the auction if I don't break it. Now, what is the auction, you might ask? What is that? I have an auction every Sunday now. Every Sunday I offer stuff for sale now. And lately I've been having to spend a bunch of time preparing just for the auction, just to get the items ready. Uh, I've sold some to people uh, through email, but I prefer not to do it that way. Uh, I usually take forever to respond to the email sales or to complete the orders just because I, I tend to put those on the back burner uh, so they don't, they don't, they can get out of hand. But I've been I've been doing that too. So, um, why am I doing that? It's it's kind of forcing me to figure out the most efficient ways to do this. And of course, the money that money's nice. But I'm getting a lot of interest. People are asking me for hunting points and stuff, and. Am I going to offer any for sale? And yeah, it's coming, but I just need to be able to get a system down that I can crank out a bunch of them. Uh, one of the most important things is just obtaining consistent stone. Stone that's consistent in quality. Nothing more miserable than 
sitting down with stone you think is good and then not being able to get anything from it except a few points that day when you sat down and you were planning on making a whole bunch of points. That's the most frustrating thing. Of course, you know, of course, a person that wants hunting points is not going to order one at a time. They want six or whatever. Three, six, or twelve. So there's that. <clears throat> I'll figure it out. Put it on my list. I got a bunch of stuff on my list still. Although now I can control my schedule a lot better. My youngest, they all turned 18. They're pretty much on their own. They can take care of themselves for the most part. And then it leaves me a lot of time. Do I want to do this full time? Well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Probably not if I want to save my, my nerves, if I want to avoid anxiety. <laughs> All right, can you see that? Uh, somebody asked me if I could show a, a tool that can be used for scrunching these edges. I just use the side of the pressure flaker, scratch backwards. Oh, well, I've been using it. I don't know if I did that in the past, but I can just use the side of the pressure flaker to get rid of some of those weak areas so I can do another pass. Pressure flakes. It's so easy to get step fractures with that side. I think I mentioned that already. You gotta be careful in preparing this the edge. This kind of bevels it. This bevels the edge. A bevel is always the best surface to press on as far as pressure goes. A little slight bevel. Uh, it's, it's better than let's say a rounded ground down edge and this is just a steel nail yeah see I'm not going to worry too much about little step fractures like that those are inevitable I'm doing aggressive pressure, but you can do passive or, you know, whatever style you, you like. Uh, aggressive pressure is pressure that uh, you quickly remove a flake. You don't wait for it. With passive pressure, you sit and wait. You push pressure on the edge or that little bevel that you create when you scratch it back. Put pressure and wait for it to release on its own. I know it's, it looks very similar to aggressive, but the flakes release very easily, even with passive. Just put it on there, wait, and it'll snap. It'll snap off a flake. All right, so I'm already going a little bit too far past the straight on some of this. Just because I'm distracted a little bit. 
you know, I cut, I cut into it. It's supposed to be straight here. I cut into it too much right there. I think I was trying to get rid of that step fracture. I'm a little bit asymmetrical. But it's okay. Asymmetry is pretty common among these. Yeah. Pretty common. Among arrowheads in general. Projectile points in general. It's very rare to find projectile points that are perfectly symmetrical in the archaeological record. They, didn't, they really didn't make them perfectly symmetrical. So yeah, I'm just being careful because it's very, very easy to create these step fractures. Let's see, maybe better to a braid that way you get less crushing. Yeah, that's a lazy way to abrade it. Just do it quickly. The better way is to get in there and abrade the individual platforms. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit better. Most projectile points were finished out with pressure, although I have seen some that look like they're done only with percussion. Now, I'll let you know if, I, if I'm working on one like that. <clears throat> Looking at this picture, some of the flake scars look pretty big on the final stage. <clears throat> Some of these final stage flakes look pretty large and this little pop out here for the notch, these pop outs, uh, they might be percussion flakes. A lot of background noise tonight. Helicopters for some reason. Well, that one was a helicopter. I think I heard something earlier on the earlier video. Anyway, for those of you who are just tuning in, I live about a half a mile from a major hospital. So you'll hear ambulances and stuff in the background sometimes. All right, so here it is, the uh, straight. I don't know how thin these were. Looks uh, not too thin. So I think I'm there. Uh, mine is not as pointy as the one in the book. I could make it pointier. It's already 19 minutes. My, how time flies when you're just 
blabbing away. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. I need to make another one of these with a longer tip. Make a new one. Yeah, these little fingernail terminations. But it doesn't look too bad. It's easy to run parallel flakes on this stuff. It, when, once you get the hang of it. And the rock is consistent, of course. If you get a nasty piece of dacite, it's not going to run consistent flakes. Okay, so to sharpen it, I use a spatula tool. Just at the very end, I use a very thin, flat tool and just snap off flakes by pushing down on the surface. And these are straight down. I think my battery is running out, even though I got it plugged into the charger. Let's see. 22 minutes. I might, this might go into a second video. Spatula tool is excellent for doing the final edge work. You're not getting the crushing from the thick tool tip. You're not getting much contact on the very edge because it's a it's very flat tool it doesn't mess too much with your flake pattern it just knocks off little bitty flakes all right so here we go i'm going to do the stem and the notching i guess i'm going to use my ishi stick because the other flaker, I don't know. Let's see. The other flaker won't be able to do big pop outs. It's a contracting stem. Yeah, I got a, a lot of room. What a leeway to do these notches. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Just can't rush it. If I rush it, I'll make a mistake. And I'll be disgusted that I blow off a barb if I'm if I got this much room. Let's see, I need to trim that. Trim it back so I don't have that on there. Yeah. Even though I am going to have serrations on here, uh, I don't want to have that little issue. I want it straight right now, and then I'll put the serrations in later. With a spatula tool with those short flakes, I'm not getting the step fractures that I get usually with a, a thick tool. Just 
push down with the flat sometimes you can run a long flake but it's kind of rare sometimes the edge gets thickened up and looks a little bit beveled in that case I need to switch to a more pointed tool Two options here a real pointy one and the one I was using I think I'll try both start with the one I was using for these bigger flakes I'm going to space these out a good distance from each other I did not see parallel flaking on the picture, although there's some very long oblique flakes. Yeah, those little. I think I'll be able to get rid of some of those steps on the the notching. You know, blast a good flake in that in that area. Get rid of that steppiness. I feel like driving a couple of big bold percussion flakes in that area, but I might regret it if I mess up on the edge. You know, I could end up crushing the edge and then end up with a divot in the edge, so I won't do it. Okay. And yep, I had to work rework the whole edge just because of that little defect. I worked this whole edge again. Now is that sight really really sharp? I don't know. It's not it's not as good as obsidian. It's very sharp, of course, but not. Not nearly as good as obsidian. Obsidian is kind of it's pretty strong. That side is kind of crumbly. Okay, so I got them. I got both sides straight. All right, let's see if I can crunch in those notches, big old notches. Let's see. I need to make sure that base is nice and pretty. Not like that though. A little bit too crushy there. Yeah, very crushy. Alright, I'm probably have to go to a spatula tool just to do these. Yeah. Okay, so this may take a while. Because the spatula tool is a little bit slower than a Ishi stick. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I can't go too crazy yet. I might actually do some indirect percussion. Yeah, on these notches. To blast them flakes up in this area. The uh, barbs curve slightly downward. What I'm looking at. Let's see if I can clean up the bottom of that 
bass. Yeah, better. All right, let's see. Am I ready to do the indirect percussion? Yeah, probably on the next segment. Okay. <laughs> 